Thank you. Um, so welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting uh, for March 18th, 2021. It is 547 p.m. at the moment. So meetings normally held uh, at the main meeting room at the municipal offices of 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass are being held remotely um, with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, which is happening tonight. Um, Remote meeting connections are listed. If you go to our town website and down on the bottom right, there's a calendar. You can get access to our agendas. You can click on this meeting and then grab a hold of the agenda. There'll be a meeting link that you can click on for this Zoom meeting. You can also dial in if you're watching on um, FCAT TV, you can dial 312-626-6799 and then uh, enter the meeting ID, which is 911 604 uh, 1580, and should you need the passcode, it's 570012. So meeting attendees should mute their phones, which is star six for landlines, unless asking a question or commenting, and all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Um, so we've called this meeting to order. We have an executive session to enter into uh, first off, and then we'll be uh, returning to public session to um, have a discussion an informational session on a uh, on the possible M north main street park and a little bit of information session there so um is our chair has our chair joined us yes she's here oh great okay welcome carolyn okay so, so i'll oh, put you in your room okay i'll make a motion first uh yeah i finally got on i just kept clicking and clicking and clicking oh good Supposed to get well, fixed. Uh, the chair does uh, does declare that a quorum of the select board is present. I assume that's a yes. Yes. Okay. Good. And then uh, the chair declares that an open meeting may have an in, a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body, which I think the chair does. It's a yes. 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 Okay. Great. Yes, Carolyn. <laughs> Oh, she might be delayed. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to make a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Yes, section. I'm saying yes. Yeah, she's delayed again. 21A3, um, the select board may enter into executive session to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or for litigation with EBI consulting as the chair declares an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. And I will um, also invite in Casey Warren, our town administrator. David Wolf on the second. Thank you, David. All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Great, she's on. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, we'll be back as soon as we can. Well, welcome. welcome to the North Main Street Park Information Session. This session is intended to present more information to the public um, from our last meeting um, and obtain feedback on plans that from this last um, for development of the park project. We've identified some questions and we'll start out with <laughs> Casey is going to um, talk about some stuff. Okay, so Casey. Want to talk about some of our concerns. Helps if I unmute. <laughs> so one of the things that I had been working with other town officials and council on was the fact that we know we need zoning relief as this lot is not pre-existing non-conforming. Since this situation may exist in other properties that the town owns, we're looking into options to help us with this, but also maintain the momentum of the project. And so we know that towns across the Commonwealth have passed bylaws to enable latitude for municipal facilities for redevelopment purposes. And different towns address it in different ways. So we're interested in seeing how that works. And that latitude can be extensive or it can be very limited. Um, 
it depends on the approach that we want to take. The select board and some of the other town officials have been discussing zoning changes to address this development for several, like I said before, for several forthcoming projects. And those include the Tilton Library, South County Senior Center, the park, senior housing, and possibly the municipal offices. Because over the past several years, we've identified that there needs to be some changes to better serve the needs of the town. So a zoning bylaw amendment may be proposed for the upcoming town meeting. The other identifying pieces of information that we did, we did settle on was that a site plan review will be filed with the planning board and a notice of intent, an NOI, will be filed with Conservation Commission. Yep. The, um, you know, the town has had significant development, um, has not had any significant development in 25 years. And this park project and other facilities are an opportunity for the town to, um, to have greater flexibility to address the changing needs for the residents. We have, you know, we do have a lot on our plate and it feels, you know, I know we're talking about the park here tonight and uh, we'll see some updated ideas, but I think, um, and get feedback from residents, but we are, you know, just, just while we've got a captured audience, we have so many different projects we are all um, in different stages of. We have, you know, obviously the library is trying to figure out when, when funding will come. We've all been kind of waiting to see when that library um, funding program will come back on and where we are in the, uh, in the queue for that. And that's, that's a pretty big outlay of money. Um, so we're looking at, you know, how does that look? And it's been quite a few years since we've looked at the design that was kind of put forward and, you know, trends have changed, you know, there's a lot has changed in the last few years. Uh, so I think that we should really look at how does that look? How does it fit in now that we, um, I think when the library first started, we didn't even own the church. Um, so we have the church property there. So that gives some flexibility on maybe how that how that fits in and we we've all been working the uh, town advisory building advisory committee has been doing great work um, having a lot of these buildings assessed this town hall that i'm in tonight the um, senior center um, that the old school building and and uh, you know and we're looking at a park at the other end of town there's just a lot of things we're working on the common we're looking at street streetscaping um, there's just a lot moving up, moving, a lot of moving parts. So we really need to kind of think about how all those are going to fit together. We're trying to, um, hopefully I'm negotiating to try and bring on a design firm to help us kind of with a master plan of all these projects. So when we do things, they have a consistent look across town. Our sidewalks look similar, depending on what end of the building, you know, what end of the town you're on and, and, and how these different projects kind of fit together we need some guidance, a little bit of guidance and, and some handholding on kind of how all that comes together and what, you know, what the property lines are, what we would want to use, what buildings want to be where. Um, there, there's just a lot of moving parts. And, and this, this one park is part of that, but it all kind of, we're realizing it all is tying in together to needing, needing to look at some zoning and some other item, other items to make sure we can, we can move forward. With, with the projects that we want to do for our residents and, and then find out from the residents which of these projects, you know, they want to fund because they're, they're all a lot of money and we have to kind of narrow them down. And, um, and I think this one is a, is a really important one. Recreation and pulling our community together is really important. We, as like we said, we haven't had one for over almost 30 years now. Uh, a park to uh, to enjoy each other's company. So, John Paturik, um, I think you you were going to share a screen with some different ideas that uh, you know, just kind of what the park is looking like now. I think, right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we took the feedback from the last meeting. Jesse Marino's on with us from the Proterra Design Group, who's helping us kind of evaluate our options over at the property. So, um, I'll go ahead and and go into uh, share screen mode here and see start and look at the property as we see it there we go all right so jesse incorporated uh, a ton of the feedback from the past meeting one 
It's not uh, coming up yet. No, not at all. Not on our. Well, I see your your files, but not the major plan yet. So you mm. might have to share again and stop share and share again or something. All right. Let me. Uh... Is that some of that operator? No, it's absolutely <laughs> the operator. Yeah, you know it, Tim. I'm teasing. Yeah, no, you're good. Yep. Stop sharing. Good. And let me pull it up first, and then I'll yep. start sharing and see if that's that any better. Come on. All right. And can you see that now? Yes. Yep. Good. All right. So now I've got to minimize my people to the right and see if we can maybe amplify in here a little bit. Oh, yeah, that works. That's and great. Kind of coming from the, the North Main Street. You can yep. everybody see my cursor okay? Yes. Yeah, yes. moving. Good. So when, when Jesse and Tom looked at this recently, they tried to incorporate pretty much every idea that came out of the last two meetings. We originally right. had uh, an extra turn lane in over here. That was kind of pulled in to give the neighbors uh, some more wiggle room on both sides over here. So it's mm -hmm. literally just two lanes coming in with a sidewalk on the south side in. And you see yeah. it cross over. And we reduced all the parking that was over here came completely out. Uh, I know Gail and Michael that live right here preferred the parking lot and actually everybody did on more of mm -hmm. this <coughs> angle. Yep. So with that said, we created the two bus spots right here in close proximity to the restrooms, storage building, kind of concession stand. That's It's a <coughs> modified three purpose building that Deerfield Academy agreed to build for us on the property. Over here, if we can afford it, if uh, if finances allow, would be a playground and like a picnic area for families. Mm -hmm. The band shell was placed over in the corner to kind of divert the noise out in this direction. Yep. And Jesse actually came up with a great idea of putting the storage building and concession stand here to try and minimize the impact of any noise variants coming off towards Michael and Gail's house mm -hmm. and possibly over towards Judith's house over here. Yep. Um, you know, whether acoustically, whether that works or not, I'm no expert, but it's, you know, yeah. just, a, it's a try. Yeah. So one of the reasons that we also kept it in that direction is we recognize the fact that a lot of people that love to come to the, the evening concerts from five to 8 PM enjoy pulling up close. They, there are folks that are 60, 70, 80 years old, and we want them to be in close proximity to be able to park their car, walk 10 or 20 feet, sit up a lawn chair and be able to watch it from literally right over here. They don't yep. have to walk all the way over here unless they <laughs> feel like it. So this yeah. whole area is, is almost a multi-purpose area. This net could be removed. Um, that's this area itself. You see the walking path goes all the way around the exterior. That would be paved so it's handicap accessible. Yep. Over here would be some wildlife viewing area. Um, we do know that there's a small sliver of wetlands over here that will have to go to Conservation Commission with an NOI to possibly be replicated. That replication area is actually identified over here. So when Jesse worked on the design, he incorporated the walking to come through into the woods and back over and on the edge of the main athletic field, the multi-purpose athletic field, is the pavilion that Eagle Brook offered to put in. Mm -hmm. One of the other feedback that we got was people really wanted a tennis court. The, the recreation committee, a few of the residents identified that we really want a new basketball court. So Jesse was uh, good enough to incorporate a basketball court in over here, but it also doubles as parking overflow. So there are gates here oh, that open yep. wide open that literally this could be parking overflow. If, uh, you know, we had a, a game going on here and we needed to put an ambulance in here, we could. Right. Over here, you see there's kind of poles all the way mm -hmm. along the edge. 
that's a 20 foot high net fence line. So okay. as you get athletic teams in here on both ends, we're not losing the balls over into wetland protected areas or yeah. onto the railroad tracks themselves. It actually is there to stop the balls and make it as safe as possible for people using that paved handicap accessible walking path. And you see certainly between the smaller and the uh, larger athletic fields, there are, is the walking path in between where people literally can go all the way around. In here, there's actually wooden fencing with splits in between it. So cars can't drive out there, but yet people can walk in between each mm -hmm. section to gain access. And that's pretty much the design overall encompassing literally almost 100% of the information that came out of the last meeting. Right. Have other views of that? Yeah. Yeah. Let me jump out of this one and you yeah. tell me if I'm going to see if I can pull it up again with another new screen. Yeah. I think there was like another, Oh, there's different view, right? I'm actually going to uh, see if I can pull up. the whole, whole package. Good. So can you guys see my screen now, yes. Trevor? Yep. Good. So that was one view. Yep. And as we go down, there's other views that are here. Oh yeah. Yep. And it kind of brings it back from looking, we're on the north side facing south. Yep. Yep. So Frontier is yep. actually over on the top of my screen over here. Yep. Uh, the, the Mark property, Judith and Vera, is yep. over here. Yep. yep. And Mike and Gail are right here. I yep. know Gail emailed me recently that she really, instead of a six foot fence would like an eight foot fence over here. And I said, you know, yep. that's something we absolutely can entertain, but let's see where we're at with the project overall. Yep. Um, there is right through here, an actual um, drainage area which Jesse may want to talk about in a few minutes. That's way beyond my scope spectrum and expertise. So, okay. but we can keep going through a couple different bird's eye views. And I certainly, Jesse and I can entertain any questions that people may have. I mean, Jesse's the expert. Yeah. Yeah, Tim's got his hand up. You're still muted, Tim. Tim, you're muted. I'm sorry, the, the parking I noted is listed as gravel. Um, can you talk about the walkways and the parking and how much of it is pervious versus impervious? Because this will come before the Conservation Commission and it's going to be a concern with the type of property that you're dealing with. Yeah, so I think that'd be a, a perfect issue, issue for Jesse to address because I know handicap has to be paved. I know the entrance road was paved. And then from there on, I think Jesse can handle that a lot better than I can. Sure. Um, initially, in the last couple of hearings, um, initially, we kind of thought that it would be best to have a sort of a gravel parking area um, uh, just for budget purposes and whatnot. But uh, during the last um, couple of hearings, and, and it became apparent that uh, people were looking for more of a paved approach. Um, the way we show it now is paved. Um, you know, we're looking at options. We haven't done the engineering yet, but we're looking at options for perhaps some pervious pavement. Um, we did incorporate uh, biofiltration and some rain gardens, as you can see in between the parking areas. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's sort of our, our best guess at this point of, um, of, you know, of how to handle some of the stormwater. Hmm. Good question, Tim. I know you get to jump off. Do you have anything? You're good before you jump off? Thank you. Good night. Good night. Right. Thanks, Tim. Good. Yeah. Being that I'm screen sharing, uh, Trevor and Carol and I apologize. I can only see like five people. Yeah. No, yep. that's so, okay. I can't I can either see any. Uh, let's see. Yep. Yeah, so if somebody pops up that has a question, just please go right through. I'm also watching, so... Well, thanks, Tim. Rocky, I see your hand up. Yep, yep if you want to unmute. Yeah. Hi. Um, I know one of the suggestions uh, 
they were talking about like pavers, you know, buying pavers and mm -hmm. having your names on them. Yes. Was that anywhere in there? Or is that just something that that's sitting in the wayside for now? No, we, we can look at incorporating that. I've just been waiting for the information back from Jen. She was going to research how much area she needed. Okay. That was for the 350th to raise money for right. the 350th. <laughs> yep. And, mm -hmm. Yep. And we can look at multiple areas for those. If we think they're going to last a long time, this main area where you see my cursor right, right. now moving on the screen, we yeah. could look at an area like that. My concern yeah. is, is really, if your name's etched in them, how long are they going to last? Or do we want to look at an area over here, here? Um, my mind's wide open. I'm sure Jesse can come up with a great concept. I'm just waiting for Jen to actually get me the size that she needs. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thank you. Also, yeah, I, would, I would just add, that's exactly right. We sort of envisioned um, perhaps it's over by the concession area. But as John said, there's a, a lot of different areas we could, we could you know, potentially put it. One other yeah. idea we came up with, um, I know, pavers were, were brought out there with the names, but um, there's a lot of park benches proposed. So perhaps um, there could be placards on the park benches. Um, there's yeah. a wide variety of things that we could do, um, but um, you know, even trees, whatnot, you could get a placards, yeah. but um, sure. to be determined, that's, that was a great idea that people came up with. It's just a matter of um, you know where exactly um, on this concept it, it could be, but there is flexibility. Yeah, most of this stuff, most of these decisions will be ultimately down the road when we have um, more opportunity to get detailed. This is just, again, informational kind of thing, collecting the information, making sure we have some response back, um, and keep adjusting until we have an idea of what we would like to see. Mm -hmm. So yep, I attorney. have two hand raised. I have Karen and also Attorney McLaughlin. Uh, excuse me, I, I don't recall whether this was asked before, but are the walkways around going to be um, uh, in the winter? Will they be maintained by the DPW? You know, with the with the sidewalk plow. Uh, I don't even think we've gotten nearly close to that yet, Karen. That's a valid question. So I think one of the first things we'd wonder is in the winter, can we put an ice skating rink in there? And if yeah. we can, then do we go ahead and, and maintain them so people have an outdoor athletic arena, whether it's ice skating or a walking path that's actually maintained? And I think that's that's an operational question that we can address in a year or two, but that's way down the road from where we're at. It's a good thought though. Okay. It is. I, that makes well, a true. difference between something that can be used three quarters of the year and, and year round. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Karen, we're, we're you, Karen. trying when we we talk about senior housing center, you know, senior center and senior housing and, and connecting to downtown. It's all about walkability, sociability. And at some point, we're, we're going to have a walking path from the town common that goes through by the elementary school, cuts through everything. Um, so back around to the senior center so that seniors have um, the way, well, everybody in town has, can be off the road and have, and, and would we maintain year round? Very much potentially, but um, you know, it's it's in the development, it's in the back of our mind, and I think people really do want it. So it's one of those things that potentially can happen, but um, it's, it's planning is not. I mean, that's too advanced. That's when we get to actual design incorporate operational costs and operation what we decide to do. But it is in the back of our mind. It's one of on the wish list kind of things, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks very much. Thank you. Carolyn. Carolyn, I have a suggestion. If you mute your computer or whatever you're on and you use your cell phone and call in, we'll yeah. be able to hear you and also see you. Yeah. yeah Attorney McLaughlin. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, I appreciated uh, sending the plans to us. Um, I want to make a, a one thing clear. I represent Judith Rathbone. She has a one half interest in the 131 property. Her, her sister Vera Mark owns the other half. And Vera is here uh, with representation by Brother Counsel Michael Fenton, also a land use and zoning attorney who I've worked with before. Um, 
I, I just, you know, we're putting the cart way before the horse. Uh, I want to say that, you know, my client doesn't want any development here. We don't want the parking lot. We don't want the bathrooms. We don't want um, the driveway for hundreds of cars coming in between two residential properties. Uh, this lot was never meant to be developed in this manner. This lot is not a building lot. I've been saying it's not a building lot. And you finally seem to admit that it's not a building lot. When you purchased it for two hundred and seventy something thousand dollars, the plans of record in the registry of deeds said this is not a building lot. Yet everyone's going forward, and and I, it leads me to ask a couple of questions like. When did you know it wasn't a building lot? And why didn't you tell the town meeting voters when you were getting one million in June, a town meeting vote, and another million in October, that this really isn't a building lot? We're going to have to come back to the town meeting to get more votes. I mean, and, and how much has been sent, uh, spent pursuant to the first allocation from the town meeting vote of June? I know you spent probably 300000 for costs and expenses pertaining to the purchase, but how much of that million do you have left? How much of the second million, you know, if any, uh, has been allocated? And what has it been allocated for? And how much did you spend after you knew this wasn't a building lot? And are you going to tell the voters that you didn't know? You, you know, some, I, I believe some people must have known this all along, yet you presented it, you're patting yourselves on the back. It's like, look at the great building lot we found. And it's not a building lot. It's not a building lot for a purpose. It's not just some technical violation, whether it's a town, whether it's a factory, whether it's a real estate developer, you shouldn't be doing a project this big with such a tiny frontage where, where hundreds of cars are going to be going in within tens of feet of people's houses. You wouldn't let a factory do this. You wouldn't let a developer do this. Um, so I really need, I think the taxpayers have a right to know that's the voting citizens have a right to know what weren't they told, uh, you know, maybe in June people weren't aware, what weren't they told in October um, about this? And how much have you spent already? I mean, I know the argument's going to be, oh, you better change the zoning bylaws <clears throat> because we've already spent two million. Well, you better stop spending until you have a building lot. You are now spending money, taxpayers' money, on something that as we speak right now is illegal. Unless, I, unless I'm getting something wrong here, as I've, as I've been saying, and no one answered my questions from November, and it's and since then, it's not just that, you know, I'm, I'm saying, Nana, I told you so. What I'm saying is you keep spending taxpayer money on something that's illegal. And, you know, if someone can answer that, especially how much have you spent, what, how much from the first town meeting vote of June of 2020, how much from the October, and how did you spend it, on what did you spend it, because um, I think when you go to ask at town meeting for mea culpa, you know, we need to have, have this fixed. They're going to want to know when did you know so there was a problem and how much did you spend? So, Jen, you had your hand up now. I see that you jumped off. Do you want to jump back on? Um, if Are you referring to a site plan that was at the Registry of Deeds that was an a and &R? Yes. Okay, so all a and &R say that it's not a building lot. It's not, that's what it says on every a and &R. a and rs are for lot lines. It doesn't pertain to whether or not you can build on it or not. No, it, it, it doesn't, it does, that a and &R had the designation not a building lot. No, from, they all do. No, they don't. No, they don't. I do a and rs all the time. If I have proper frontage, they don't write not a building lot on my a and &R lots. They write not a building lot on, on the lots that aren't building lots. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay, I'm just right. If if there is one that you're you're changing the lot line, it will say that it's not a building lot on it. That doesn't mean that you can't build on it because you can change zoning and you can change other things, and then it can become a legal building lot. What I'm saying, go back and do your research. It's it's there. Um, that's all I want to say. I'm not going to argue with you. Well, if you if you're right, then thank you, don't you need... thank you very much, Mr. Okay. McLaughlin. I appreciate it. Well, you're don't... asking us legal questions, which we don't have the answer to. No, no, no. I'm not asking legal questions. I'm asking monetary questions. How much have you spent? When did you spend it? And who knew the problem with the lot before the June vote and before the October vote? That's what. Oh. Those aren't legal questions. Those aren't legal questions. They're information. 
I think we're learning as we go. So we'll, you know, I mean, it's not, not, everybody doesn't have all this laid out when they come up with plans to do stuff. So it takes some time uh, to put this stuff together. And, you know, not every project is just easy. You know, there's not gigantic land for everybody to just, you know, build on. It's going to take some time to, to, to go through it and see what we need. I can fall on my sword anytime. You know, I, I can learn all the time. Um, I make mistakes. People make mistakes. We move on. We, you know, we say what we've done and we, we ask for forgiveness or we say this is what we want to do. And it's up to the town's folks to decide whether they want to continue with the project or not. Well, it's, not we, it's not that difficult. So well, we, well, we know the, the expenditures. Does someone have it within 100000 200000 I believe we haven't spent $2 million on this project. I don't think so. I don't think so. We're so, trying to make so, this out like we've blown $2 million of the town's no, tax. Attorney McLaughlin, we've spent, the land, and you know we've spent $272,000 on the land. We've spent right. roughly $3,000 with a wetlands engineer. Yeah. And yeah. I don't recall any additional, maybe a land surveyor. Yeah, possibly. But I, if you were wondering a rough number, the rough number at this point would be approximately, with land purchase, 300000 So that includes the plans in front of us? Yes. Okay. These are just indications. We're still collecting information. No one's paid for any for a design. We're not designing yet. We're still collecting information. We're trying to get what people want. So we, we, just, we understand we, that you don't you and your client don't want it. Is there anybody else have any questions that may want the project or? Yeah, it's very well, disheartening because we're not experts. Yeah, We're doing the best we can. We're trying to navigate it the best we can. You're the expert and that's amazing. And, you know, I, I feel like a knucklehead, but I'm doing the best I can. We and all are. that's, that's what I'm trying to do for 5,000 people in this town. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm not an attorney. I'm not a land use attorney, but I do the best I can. Yes. With that in mind, let's please. Carolyn, you just muted yourself. I think you hit the key, the space bar. Uh, yep. uh, anyway, Attorney all... Fenton has a question. There you go. Then we yep, will move on. on mute. To, yeah, then we'll move on to Sue Antonellis and Bob. Th thank you very much. Um, You're welcome. Uh, Attorney Michael Fenton, I'm a shareholder at Chat Schwartz and Fenton. Our address is 1441 Main Street in Springfield, Massachusetts. I'm here on behalf of my client, Vera Mark. Bear is a 50% owner um, in the adjoining parcel uh, of her late father. She's also a co-fiduciary and co-personal representative of the estate. Um, we have significant concerns, uh, as some were articulated by my brother counsel, attorney McLaughlin, mainly about uh, this largely intensive use involving an access driveway um, and parking. Uh, this seems to be uh, something that will be a very large uh, recreational space for the town, uh, which will interfere with the quiet enjoyment um, for the neighbors. And so that's, that's really our concern. We can get into a lot more specifics, but that's what it comes down to. And I wanted to first just introduce myself to the board. Welcome. Make a point on behalf of my client. And if I may, the one question that I have is that it was stated that there was going to be a site plan that would be filed with the planning board. And I'm wondering if this is that site plan or whether or not there'll be some stamped and engineered drawings that would be prepared for that purpose. No, um, this is just the introductory stage. So ultimately, as we work through the process, there will be a stamped set of plans that will go to the planning board. But I think we're probably three to six months away, minimal from that point. We're okay. And if I. We're still collecting information, setting priorities, making sure that everybody has as much input as possible and um, moving forward before we to obviously figure out what we're actually with the ability. So yeah. um, we, we, we appreciate the, the opportunity to, to be heard on this subject. Sure. It, I, about that about that filing though, just if I may. So what is what is the intent of the the site plan filing with the planning board and and who is who is the applicant like who's who's submitting that request to the planning board and for what purpose it would We're be not a, a town of deerfield for recreational and educational 
And is there some type of permission you're requesting from the planning board or is it you're just filing it for purposes of getting feedback? Well, we're not there yet. We haven't filed, we haven't chose to file yet. So when we get there, we'll let you know. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so can we move on now to Sue and Rob? Can you um, um, give us some more up, uh, update on your input last meeting? I know Rob wasn't able to make it tonight. Yeah, but I think he was, Sue's on with us. He was under the weather. Oh, okay, so yeah. is Susie there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, how are you? Um, I'm very happy with this plan. I think it takes into everything that um, people wanted. And the basketball court, I'm glad that was added, and I'm glad the playground was added. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm just very happy with the way it is right now. So for the, those of that don't know, Sue is our full-time recreational director for the town. Um, Susie, no, just, uh, Sue, were you, were you from your notes, do you think this picked up every, um, most of what um, people were talking about from our last meeting? Yes, I do. I think it takes care of many people's concerns and, you know, putting the parking where it is makes sense. I just think everything makes sense the way the band shell is oriented and, you know, having the restrooms and the kitchen and the um, storage right there so I can unload my car and um, the pavilion over there next to the not too far away from parking. You know, I think it's a, it's a good plan. Um, and I do like the, um, actually, I was going to suggest tonight the ideas about, you know, having placards, having people donate trees mm -hmm. and benches and, you know, picnic tables or anything like that. You know, I think that would be an interest to many people in town. Well, and that also would defray some of the costs. So that's. So I'm going to talk a little bit about safety. Just, I think one of the things, um, and, and I don't think this is any secret that the town had always hoped to work with um, Mr. Marks and Judith um, and Vera um, to make this park, you know, bigger, less squeezed in. You know, we would have had, um, we had always hoped to have kind of a nature space, um, a, a safe pathway for the children to come from from the school over to the fields and back and not have to walk out onto the road or have to put a sidewalk down 90, you know, down, down North Main Street. Um, I mean, uh, th there are so many wonderful opportunities that we could have achieved to working together to, um, to put educational spaces, to, to do nice, you know, low impact nature spaces, um, learning facilities for, this, for the children. I mean, I, I, there's countless things that we could have done low impact that would enhance this place uh, immensely. And I think that, you know, originally that's what our intent was all along and, and to be able to use the parking lot on the, I guess in this picture, you can see the baseball diamond, there's a, there's a parking lot for Frontier there, was to put, you know, a low impact path through or even a driveway through there so we weren't coming right off in between the two houses or, you know, there's so many different other things. Or we could even put a pathway from, you know, from the football field, you know, a winding through the woods with different educational stands all the way through out to the field. Um, th there's just, the opportunities were immense and, and wonderful to think about. Um, and, and, you know, I'm sorry that we got to this point where it, it isn't a possibility. So we're doing everything we can to, to kind of, okay, pick up the pieces and say, well, since that, you know, since we can't find a solution there, we've got to find other ways to make this work. And, um, and that will require uh, some some more safety issues on North Main Street, um, you know, calming effects to maybe slow down traffic, and then we'll need some crosswalks from Frontier over the sidewalk, or uh, a new sidewalk from Frontier, you know, down North Main Street to the park. Um, we really have to think about that and think about the design and get some some thoughts about do we cross people cross the kids across. North Main and walk them up the sidewalk that we have and then back then across the road again or do we put a sidewalk you know down the west side of North Main Street to the school um, providing this park happens providing we're able to do that 
Um, so I think those are, those are really the things that we really need to think about for safety um, down the road if this, if this park would, would be able to happen. Um, again, I stand ready and would be so willing to work with Vera and, and Judith about um, coming up with a design that you know, would give us a right of way for the kids to walk through or any other kind of educational or nature-based walkways uh, through the property. Um, Cause I know that, I know that nature is important to them. And, um, and I, I believe education was also very important. And I thought if there was ways that we could work together for, for finding a common uh, goal and, and maybe finding other ways to reduce some other impact, if we had more space, that would be, that'd be wonderful. But um, in the meantime, we'll have to think, think about you know, I just, we really have to talk with um, and get some, some thoughts and studies about how do we get the kids down there? Should the park happen? You know, should the park go there? I mean, we have a walkway coming in, a pathway sidewalk coming in from, from Main Street, but how do we get the kids there safely and, and make sure, because traffic can cruise right along on North Main as soon as you come around that sharp turn. I mean, we've had people, you know, almost go into the, <laughs> to the, um, monuments there it's just a sharp turn so people then once they're past there it's a pretty straight away up to the dry bridge so if we can find ways to calm down traffic anyways it's always a good good thing so um i think that's really all i had um i think you know, one of the things that we want to um i would just like to clarify since if in case we have to do this in phases um i think uh susie has certainly indicated that rob is the athletic fields um, seem to be like would be the biggest demand. So getting those done would probably be the number one project. Hey, um, Carolyn, can you yeah. just can you just call in? Do you yeah, have I, did. Call? I did. I did. You... It didn't work. <laughs> I couldn't really? talk. Yeah. Um. All right. So, Trevor, what I need you to do is just yeah. to um talk about the prioritization. Do, do it. Oh, right. Yes, I can do that. I can do that. Because we do. So, Carolyn, when you actually talk up, your mic picks you up much better. When you s sit back away from your computer and you start okay. slumping All right. your voice. Well, what we what we want to do is if 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 we have to do this in phases, if we get no grants, um, uh, obviously we're going to try to work with you and try to get. But if we get no grants, we have to do this in phases. We want to prioritize this. So what we want to prioritize is, uh, I'm, my understanding is athletic fields. Is there anyone that does not agree that the athletic fields be the number one priority? I guess okay. that, I mean, it makes sense, certainly. That's, uh, I mean, that's the information that we're getting. And then it seemed like the, there was a real um, effort or demand to get the basketball courts. Does that seem to be a correct? Um, you know, for, for me, I think, uh, yes, it's really important to do. I, is it more important than, um, you know, a maintenance building and the pavilion? I mean, well, I know the that those seem building, to be funded. Yeah, but right? Trevor, we aren't going to pay for the maintenance right. building. Right. I know they, they, they hope to donate for that. Um, That's going to be donated, right. We're only talking so, about stuff that we're paying for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, uh, you know, are, are, I mean, parking is probably more important than a basketball court, right? Because you got to get people there to, I mean, I don't know where else they park, right? Well, I'm, I'm hoping um, we can figure out something to do with permit. What's that? I'm hoping that we'll figure out something to give us a good parking. Yeah, I can't hear you. Sorry. But yes, I think parking then probably should go above basketball. Yeah, and then basketball number oh, letter C for sure. Okay. Then would the then the walking path would that be because you're talking about more generational use than, a, than the playground? I think it's, it's more important than a playground. Yeah. So then, then we're sort of agreeing that the playground would be a separate project lower down on the list. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted um, to make sure, does anyone not agree with those kind of priorities? Anybody that's to, here? 
the playground is super important because you have people, you know, the kids are, you know, the younger kids, the older kids are on the field. The younger kids need a space to be and not be, you know, like I know, no, talking at their parents and it's just a safe place for them to hang out and then, you know, enjoy waiting the hour while the kids play or whatever uh, the game. I think it is really important, but I also feel like the walking path is like one of the most important things of this whole project because it does give outdoor exercise and people to, uh, you know, a place to, a safe place that people can walk around. And um, I just, and, and I like, you know, Sue's ideas of the different, when we could afford it, and that's way down on the list, but as, as the project goes on later on, if should we're able to ever do this project, you know, those little exercise spots here and there to be able to stop and, and use would be yeah. really you know cool. What? I just love that idea. Yeah, we didn't we didn't put that in. I think that should be separate. That, I mean, it is that a, it is something that can be added for sure yeah. down the road. Yeah. Okay. Can I speak? Sure. So, um and perhaps the playground we could do even in phases, you know? Yep. yep. Uh, build build it out. You know, start with something small and just make sure we have something that we can add on to. That's a good okay. idea. I mean, it's, it's the space before anything, right? So the right. kids have we always want space. space to be, and then what they climb on and stuff could be added down the road. Susie, do you think you could give us a, a, a couple different options for the playground area? Um, so area that was you know, um, would address our needs, but, you know, you, you could build you know, a smaller area or a bigger area, different, different options for the playground. When we say playground, you know, people have some vision of it, but um, the newer playgrounds are quite, ex you know, quite expansive choice. And yes, I have, a, I have a lot of, I get a lot of magazines about with yeah. Very, all kinds of playgrounds, yep. um, in all different sizes, and that's why I suggested that we could start small and and build yeah. on to it. Yeah, but I can I can look into that. Yeah, could you give us more information? Do a little bit of research on that for us, please. Mm -hmm. Um, the elementary school uh, playground was put in. Um, could you also just follow up and see if there's any feedback on that? Um, how successful that was, and what people felt about that, because that was a really nice playground installation. Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty successful, having um, Deerfield Academy kind of came in and supervised that. Yeah. And, and um, there was, I think there were plenty of community members who came in and helped. That was, that was a shifts. great great awesome project to work together as a community for you guys might google uh, something called a naturalized playground it's, okay um, it's a little bit different it's kind of something i envisioned here but again it's you know it's, it's up to you guys um it's a little bit of different take on a park um if you kind of google that it's really okay. um creating a play space that's basically on a natural you know, um, features, um, and then there's some um, other types of playscapes kind of worked in, but it's not a, uh, if you, especially if you have another playscape type thing in town, it's just a little bit different approach. Um, it, it, it might fit Ooh. well here. Um, yeah, just, like an, just an idea to throw up. No, I like it. It looks really good. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, because there's okay. a lot of rain gardens and stuff built right into it. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. Does anyone else have any um, uh, comments or questions on what what this what the this overall vision so far? All right. Um, I think what we'll do then um, agree to bring this up at our select board um, figure out what we need to do uh, so we'll put this on the agenda Carolyn we can't hear what you're saying yeah um, I think 
I think the next idea is to kind of have a discussion at the select board as to how we would, you know, what kind of zoning issues we'd want to address if we, if we want to and how they relate to all projects down the road. Um, yeah. And um, I, that's going to be more of an in-depth discussion. So we're going to have to kind of, I need to do a little research on that and then um, put that on an upcoming meeting to kind yeah, of discuss how that, what, what the consequences or unintended consequences, you know, what are, what are the safeguards we need in there, how, you know, look at other communities and what they're doing and how they, um, you know, how it gives them some latitude and some flexibility, but still protecting the public um, and the residents for, from, you know, from the different projects, so. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, I know, yeah, you were cutting out there, <laughs> so. Okay. Good. All right. Any All other right. questions from anybody else? Have any comments? I can't see. I can't don't play. see anything. No. Okay. All right. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. And, yes. Um, it's always good to get more feedback. And if anyone has any, please send it along. And we'll. Well, and and we'll take the information that we've gotten from this meeting, pursue some more. Susie will do some more research. And we'll come forward with some more information. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank Have a good night, everybody. Be Hi, safe. Everybody. Have a good night. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you.